Your natural center is God. And when you choose to live from that center, you will be different. A life that is whole, centered, and balanced is different than one that isn't. It really is that simple. You are a different person when you are in Christ. Your personal, professional, and family decisions will be different when they come from your natural center, which is God. And that difference is something that rises up organically. It's not something you create. It's something God creates as you live from a relationship with Him. This difference, this holiness, is also not something you do. It's someone you are. It's something God makes in you as you center your life on Him. Holiness literally means being set apart or operating from a different center. Holiness is being different. However, we must remember it's not being different from your true created self. It's being different from an imbalanced, artificial version of yourself. Life centered in God and your natural design is simply different than a life that isn't. Are you willing to agree with God that being centered in Him and your natural design makes you different? And that's what Jesus Christ tells us today and in the gospel. He says that I want to make you holy, and the word holy means different. God intends for you to be a different person than if you didn't have a relationship with God. God intends for you to be a different parent than if you didn't walk with God and if you weren't a, a practicing Catholic. God intends for you to be different. We are designed to make a difference. And that's what this last session of Organic Holiness is all about, is that it's natural for us to want to make a difference. But if you really want to make a difference, you have to live differently. If you're the same as everybody else, you really can't make much of a difference. Right? So making a difference requires us being different. And so making a difference for God and the things of God and his values in our world, like unconditional love and grace and mercy and righteousness, if you want to make a difference in the world for those things, then you have to allow God to make you different. Your difference will make a difference. As you live from a different center than the world around you, God will have the freedom to make a difference in his world through you. You are his instrument, his instrument. You don't need to go out on a mission to change the world. You simply need to welcome the changes God makes in you. Those differences cannot go without effect in our world that so longs for God. All too frequently, we try to do great things for God, instead of letting Him be a great God in us. We simply need to give God the freedom to do great things through us, according to His intentions instead of ours. All things are possible with God, but they are only possible in us when we give God permission to do them. It is our job to live from our natural center, which is God. It is God's job to do everything else. Are you willing to agree with God that he can make a difference in this world through you only as much as you let him make a difference in you? And what you'll find is that the more you give your life to God, God will make a difference in the world through you. And the beauty is, is you don't have to make the plan and you don't even have to understand how it all plays out after the plan runs through your life. You just have to be faithful in your little part. Mother Teresa said, it's not our job to be successful or to worry about success. It's our job just to be faithful. You know, and I just encourage you to be faithful even if that means being somewhat different. And, um, and you can be different finally without having it all together. We just want to make a difference. Like that's unsettling. Like if that were your house, and that were your kitchen floor, like that would be slightly unsettling, even for somebody who's not a neat freak. It's kind of like, you wouldn't leave that there all day. You're not okay with that, especially if you have the tools to clean it up. Right, we're just not okay with not making things better. 
We're just not okay with that. It's just part of our human condition. It's natural. We want to make things better. We want to make them better for ourselves, but we also want to make them better for our families and for other people. We want a better world. Raise your hand if you would like a better world. We will only be satisfied, centered, and at peace when our entire life is made different by God. God is meant to be the center of everything in our lives because He is the God of everything in creation. We will have peace in our lives in as much as we allow God to be the God of our entire lives. The more parts of our lives that are centered by God, the more peace we will have. And the less that is centered by God, the less peace we will have. God wants to be the God of everything in your life. Your finances, your time, your marriage, your children, your professional life, your gifts, your friendships, and even your involvement at church. The Lord of all creation wants to personally be the Lord of your life, and the fruit of that will be your peace. Are you willing to agree with God that you will only have peace in every area of your life if you allow Him to be the God of every area of your life? Well, if we came from God, that's the only place we're going to have peace, is in a relationship with God. And so if like having peace is important, then a relationship with God would be the most important thing in our lives. And if we love our kids and we want them to have peace, then them having a relationship with God would be the most important thing in their lives. Just if you believe there's a God and he made you. And certainly if you believe that God is good. I mean, that's just the only way. And so we said that we are drawn to this God who is good naturally. We just aren't okay with the mess. We want to make things better. This is different than that. Isn't it? Do you see the difference? The parent on the soccer field, who's that? Versus the parent on the soccer field, who's this? The coach, who is that? The employer, who is that? The parent, who is that? Versus the parent, who is this? This parent might say at soccer, oh, we're going to make it to mass. We can still go to the park, and we'll still make it. And say that out loud. And people going like this might look up and be like, what? God? You know? And that might be the only witness you have to give, but it will make you different. This is different. The name of this talk in this whole series is called Organic Holiness. Organic just means natural, and holy just means different. We're set apart, unlike the others. It's funny. But this is doing a whole lot, and that's the same. And this is, seems like it's doing nothing, and it's different. Because grace is doing everything here. And grace is not being per given permission to do anything over here. Grace is doing everything here and nothing there. And so I want to encourage you today that your natural desire to make a difference is good. And it's from God, and you're not weird. Even being a clean freak, I think that that actually comes from God. Right? I'm just not as holy as other people. God is the God of all of creation and cares about all of his people. If your financial life were centered on him and his purposes, how would your financial habits change? It's a very personal question, and the answer to this question will evolve and change as you grow in your relationship with God. But be certain, if God is truly the God of your life, how you spend your money will change over time. The needs of the rest of the world eventually become your needs too. Jesus said that whatever we do for those in need, we do for him. Our generosity in assisting those in need is literally a form of growing in our relationship with God. As we grow in our relationship with God, we will naturally grow in our relationship with those in need. And the end result will be a deeper peace and centeredness in God in our own lives. 
God will never call us to neglect the needs of our families and ourselves. But he may call us to a different understanding of what it means to meet those needs. If we want to make a difference in the world, we must allow God to make a difference in how we spend our money. Are you willing to agree with God that you will only have financial peace inasmuch as you are willing to give Him more authority over your financial life? How do you feel about this? Like, something's wrong. And if you could fix that, you would, wouldn't you? Like, you wouldn't just leave that, like, whatever, and just carry on. Even if that was in my yard, and like, kid ran it over with his bicycle or something. I couldn't just leave that in my yard. So the things of God, like, we are passionate about on a deep level, and we should be, because that's our natural center. And it's like, ah, doesn't that just feel better? Now, how about when that's the church? How about when that's my family's relationship with the church? How about when that's big, crazy issues in the church? Like, don't we just want it to get back to that? Like, we just instinctively want that. Like, when we see scandal in the church, we just go, ah, and we want it to get back to that. When we see our kids falling away from God, we just wanted to get back to that. Like, remember when they were in second grade and they got their first Holy Communion? Those of you who are parents and your kids are just in second grade and they just got their first Holy Communion, just be careful because this might happen to you. And you're going to want it to get back to that. That is from God. That, that holiness, that desire for holiness is natural. You're not weird. You're human and you're following your creator, which is the most natural thing you will do, as opposed to the most unnatural thing, which is to keep swinging the pendulum. Jesus Christ wants you to be still, like it says in the Psalms, and know that he is God. Be still and know that he is God. Just start there. And everything else just settles into place. From your relationship with God to your relationships with others, to the difference that you are called to make in the world. If the God who created time itself really were the God of your life, how would you spend your time? Perhaps the most valuable gift God has given any of us is time. It is perhaps the most valuable gift we can give back to him as well. If the God of the universe is the God of your life, your schedule will change. When God is your center, the things of God get scheduled first, not last. Whether it's making time for personal prayer, an important conversation, a Bible study, serving someone in need, or attending Mass, if God is truly the center of our lives, it is not difficult for those things to appear on our schedule. The fruit of ordering our time around God, instead of trying to fit God into the little bit of free time we have left, is a deep peace that fills the rest of our activities. God doesn't want us to stop going to work, playing sports, or socializing with peers. But he also doesn't want those activities to stop us from having a relationship with him. The God of all creation is not something to add to our schedule when it fits. He is the very thing around which everything else fits, if he truly is the God of our lives. Time is perhaps the greatest gift we can offer anyone or any activity. It's also a gift which has been given to us exclusively by God. And how we use it says a lot about who God truly is to us. If we truly want to make a difference in the world, we must allow God to make a difference in our calendar first. Are you willing to agree with God that until your schedule is centered on Him, your life will always be off-center? What would it be like 
to die and to see God and have him say, hey, Dan, well done. You did what I made you to do. You were my guy. Like, you, the stuff that just Dan Taran was supposed to do, you did that. Well done. Like, and imagine if you saw Jesus and he said that to you. You know, what, you know whatever, insert your own name. You, well done. Tom, well done. Mary, well done. Gina, well done. You know, well done. Barry, well done. And then what kind of a legacy do you think that would leave in our world? It would certainly make things different. And it would certainly make them better. And that's just our natural instinct. God intends to be the God of everything. He's the God of the universe. So you will only have peace when your center is God, whether it's your relationships with other people, whether it's your finances, your time, your marriage, your children, your professional life, your unique gifts, your friendships, and even your involvement at church. When God is the center, all those things will change, but the fruit of that will be peace. God intends to bless us through our relationships with others. In fact, his intention for all things in creation and all the people he has put into our lives is to bless us. However, those blessings can only be received through our relationships when our relationships are operating out of their natural center, which is God. When we put our intentions for our relationships over God's intentions, we place ourselves in direct competition with the natural center and God of all the universe. Instead of insisting on our desires, we must pursue God's if we want to be centered and at peace. This is true in all of life and especially true in our relationships. We simply weren't designed to be the God of our own lives and we certainly weren't designed to be the God of other people's lives. If we insist on being the center of other people's lives, over and above God, we are crippling our relationships from the outset and dooming them to collapse beneath a weight they were not designed to bear. No one in all of creation can love us like God. No one other than God can serve as a center for our relationships. However, when God is our center and we seek him first, all of our relationships find their natural life-giving place. This is why marriage is a sacrament and not a covenant. This is why children are a gift from God and not a possession. Relationships were actually designed by God to lead us closer to Him, just like everything in creation. Only in giving God authority over our relationships can our relationships find their proper place and lead us home to our natural center, which is God. Are you willing to agree with God that unless he is the center of our relationships, our relationships will only lead to imbalance and a lack of peace? We want to make things right instinctively. I think sometimes we get that tangled up, like what does it mean to make this right or that right? And sometimes we don't always do it in a holy way. But I believe that even some of our greatest sins in this life are our mixed up effort to make things right. <laughs> It just really won't make things right. We just have the wrong approach. I think even some of the greatest catastrophes and evils in our world are really just a mistaken effort to make things right. I even think of things like, like terrorism in the name of other religions and things like that. I think it is just a mistaken effort to make things right. I, I, I think even <sighs> terrible things like, like infidelity I think that's actually a mistaken effort to make things right, and it's really mistaken. But I really think we are all looking for this, and we just don't know it. God made us in a relationship. I asked you if you made yourselves. Anybody here make themselves? They woke up one morning and said, I think it would be great if Dan Taran existed. Boop. And there I am, right? <laughs> We didn't make ourselves. And you can go back in time, back, 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 back. You could even be a believer in the Big Bang Theory. And the Big Bang Theory was written by Father George Lemaitre, a Jesuit priest who d believed that it definitively proved the existence of God, just so you know, because there was a time when there was nothing, then there was a time when there was something. And if that's the case, then there, nothing comes from nothing. Something always comes from something. There has to be an unmade something. 
or a something that uh, doesn't need to be created by another. I don't know what you would call the something that doesn't need to be created by another that then creates everything else, but I would call that God. You know? And then the very first thing that that makes, just so you know, is very eerie, the one elementary particle that you need for everything else in, rela- in, in existence to be, to exist, to have relationship with each other, the fundamental first elementary particle that you need for reality to exist is light, right? Photons. It's, ear- it's eerie if you actually look at it. So Father George Lemaitre is like, yeah, Big Bang Theory, God. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. You know, so if you look at the Big Bang Theory and you say, well, I don't believe in God because I believe in the Big Bang Theory, just be careful. I mean, that's fine if that's where you're at, but you might be saying kind of unconsciously, I don't know a whole lot about God and I don't know a whole lot about the Big Bang Theory. You know? um, so your center is God. God made you in a relationship. You didn't make yourself. You didn't. And so you are made for relationships. And we will only have peace when we have right relationships. You will make the greatest difference in the world only if you allow God to make the greatest difference in you. All too often we seek security and peace in pursuing sameness with the world. But the reality is that our true eternal security and our deepest peace will only be in holiness, in being different from what we would be without God. Holiness is natural. Holiness is organic. Goodness and holiness are what we were designed for. Nothing else will lead us to our authentic and unique identity. Nothing else will fill our lives with love, joy, and peace. Nothing but God can be your God. And nothing but God will make the difference in your life and the lives of those around you that God can make. Nothing but God alone is able to serve as your natural center. And that is why holiness is organic. Are you ready to accept God's design for you and welcome the difference he intends to make in your life? There is a gap between humanity and God. It says it in scripture. It says it in the catechism. In the catechism, it says there is an immeasurable gap between us and God. That's why we need to be saved by his grace. So it's okay if there are gaps in your life. It's okay if you perceive gaps in the circumstances of your life. There's nothing to be afraid of. Just keep letting the pendulum come to a stop. Those gaps are not going to be filled if you keep swinging that pendulum. They're only going to be filled when you let the pendulum come to a stop. And yes, it's going to make you look different than this person. Just be at peace with that difference. Because that just means that you're where God wants you because the word holy literally means different. And holiness is organic. Holiness is natural. You were meant for God. If you would like to welcome the difference that God wants to make in your life, I invite you to say this prayer with me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God, I welcome the difference you want to make in my life. I welcome the difference you want to make in the world through me. I give you control of my entire life. I invite you to be the God of my money, my calendar, and my relationships. Be my God, be my Savior, be my center. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.